once again about my cousin Betty Wyro at the Referral Center Incorporated. It's a fully licensed and is your connection to real estate brokers in Tennessee, Arkansas, Mississippi, Georgia, and Alabama. She says that if you're thinking of buying or selling a home or investing in real estate properties, call her, Betty Wyro at 901-323-8003 or 901-758-5666. I want to say something about this mental damage, psychological damage. It's a serious problem for African Americans in terms of being brutalized by someone who cares nothing about you and you're still saying, I forgive you, I love you, we want to be like you and be around you and be with you, and, and all of this insanity. So this has gone beyond the, the borderline of insanity. This is complete and total insanity. Is that not right, Omar? You know, Hitler killed uh, 12 million people. Six million have to be Jews. The Jewish people today are still trying to hunt down the killers. And they want to bring every one of them to justice. Okay. They go around the earth looking for them. They don't care how old they are. They could be in their 90s that they, they can find one. Now, did they dig someone out of the grave one time and put him on trial? I don't know if they, they dug him out, but they found an 80 year old man in New York and put him on trial. Yeah, they, they hunt him down. They hunt him down. <laughs> hunt them down. They ain't forgave nobody. America don't forgive its killers either. No. They don't care who committed a crime against us. Look, if we were a forgiving nation, under God, one nation, under God, under Christ, what the hell you want to be under? <laughs> right. The, the World Trade Center, 2,978 people died. You ain't forgave nobody. The next day, you went to war. If you were a forgiving Christian nation, forgive them all and just call it a day. That's not you, and that shouldn't be us. Right. Okay. The next one, Lonnie. Believing that Martin Luther King is more important than Malcolm X, because white people market him more regularly. Dr. Boyce Watkins says that in his 27 points, the way in which African Americans are indoctrinated from birth, one of those points he says that the average African American believe that Martin Luther King is more important than Malcolm X because white people market him more regularly. So is this African American still seeking approval of white supremacists and, and wanting to be loved by someone who brutally murders and kills you every chance, chance they get? Lonnie, is that, is that, am I correct in my analysis? I mean, I, I agree with that, that statement. Um, that's, we, as a school, I know I was taught more about uh, Martin Luther King than any of, uh, matter, matter of fact, in that next speech, I probably didn't hear any problem until I was in high school. Mm -hmm. And, Understanding the tone, uh, the tone of voice, and not only that, every interview that I personally seen Malcolm X in, I mean, you couldn't really argue with any of his points. I mean, and I understand as as a young black man watching uh, Malcolm X debate uh, any of his adversaries, adversaries, or um, anyone that wanted to vote. And even our, and within our own uh, yes. uh, people, um, and <laughs> watching them uh, debate him, it, it seemed to me that you could obviously see what side they were on. Because, mm -hmm. like I said, you couldn't debate any of you, you really couldn't debate any of his arguments um, without showing what your real intention is. But uh, at one point, I wanted to bring you know. As we all know, the media, one thing that they they kept perpetuating about uh, King is his speech about peace and, you know, and all of that. And X was more like, like you, you all saying, eye for eye, you know, we at least defend ourselves. We can't just sit here and let them, uh, if, if we uh, just sit here and allow them to, to beat and do us like this, then we're I'm pretty much saying, hey, you, you got any time, any place, you can beat us and, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like I said, just the the, the, the arguments that he bring out and the, the clear, uh, what the media wanted us to see was they don't want to see a black man out there standing up for his own, you know, or de defending his people or even speaking against the establishment that be. So I feel that even 
in glorifying, uh, you know, how they glorify King, which I, I got much respect for King and, and the movement. But one thing we talk about the media. The media. Okay. The media didn't want us to see King and X together. Also, okay. you know, I I seen clips where King and X were, you know, actually talking and, and trying to, you know, uh, promote uh, a movement within that movement. Mm -hmm. You know, but I say that just my opinion. You know, that the, the movement that X had, uh, we, we we still need that movement. That 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 voice were unapologetic about the, the crimes that has been uh, targeted against our people and and we're not we're not standing up against we're just allowing it like I said we wanna march and we wanna mm -hmm. hold hands with with the oppressor or we wanna beg him for beg him to uh, to feed feed our own community. Okay. When we got powers to feed our own people but when we try to do that, every from what I've just studied, you know, I'm just a student. I'm, I'm no no professor. I have no doctor or uh, none of that. I just like to research about a history. And from what I see, every um, strategy or movement that we made to do for our own our own people, the enemy, the, the Caucasian race, has. Um, Discredited all the movements and um, stopped their steps. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's a part of that's a part of the warfare that we're talking about comprehensively. But I do want to make one comment about something you said, and that apologizing for doing for your people is a sign of diminishment. So when I say diminishment, I won't point out a sign of weakness. So when if I say diminishment. That, that covers the whole thing. Number 25, Talu, mm -hmm. thinking that it's normal to have an all-black neighborhood with mostly white police force, when there are no all-white neighborhoods with a mostly black police force. Well, that's, a, that's a broad question. Hey, that, that, that's a, that, that, those broads I've been beating for quite a while. Okay. <laughs> I've always suggested that white cops should not patrol black communities. They shouldn't. I mean, and, and, and the, the greatest argument I get on Facebook and, and Twitter and other places is coming from black folk who wants to say, what are we going to do if the white folks leave? What are we, what's going to happen to us if, if the, the uh, Caucasian police officers are pulled out of our neighborhood? And then the other, the other point they're bringing up is, you're saying that there aren't any black, bad black cops. See, in other words, we have become so dependent on Caucasian power and authority, we just can't think outside of that box. Mm -hmm. We don't need them. I would rather for us to be in our community, the neighborhood, killing each other like dogs, than to have those people in our community talking about patrolling the streets. And then I got to see them beat one of our kind in, the na in our neighborhood like dogs. Okay, give me something better. Take them out of the neighborhood. Let us set up our own security systems. L bring in more black cops. I don't care. At least they're not shooting us down on top of the hoods of cars and beating us to death like these Caucasian police officers are doing, of whom I call killer cops. Okay, in fact, I, now I call them the Ku Klux Klan's killer cops. Okay, and now I'm going to add out of Hitler's SS squad, Ku Klux Klan killers cops. Okay? We have a long name for them. Long name for them. <laughs> you know? And so the, the bottom line is we have to be men. See, I'm talking to the men. We have to demand something. And our problem is we don't demand anything from anybody ever. We, we use the system. Oh, they got to stop. Somebody got to do something to save us. No. As a community of people, as black Americans, we should demand that Caucasian police officers leave our community. Mm -hmm. Example, okay. hypothetical example, if black police officers were in Caucasian community doing the exact same thing these Caucasian police officers are doing in the black community, 
What do you think would happen? Well, they get their butt kicked out. Ain't no way in the world you feel black cop in a Caucasian neighborhood. No way on this earth. And furthermore, the community would get together and wage war against them if they had to. The Caucasian people don't think like we think. They have a brain. They have courage. They have commitment to their community. They have, they, they have the constitutional right and they have white privilege. They are not going to accept the same thing that we accept because we are in fact inferior because we don't do anything about the situation that's upon us. I want to go to you, Jeffrey. Is your observation the same as mine when it comes to... He pointed out a couple of things. One, I know this, I agree with it, but one, I don't necessarily agree with it. But here's the one that I see. That there's a distinct difference between white cops and black cops. Should I go further? You don't see mm -hmm. as many killings and murders from white black cops as you do white cops. And I think that distinction has been pointed out on this table here. Sociologically, Jeffrey, give us your take on, on, on contrast and compare, if you will. Well, let me just say, first of all, my first response to the question is, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I can try to pull out a couple of points or, 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 or tell you why I've come to that particular uh, answer. Okay. Yeah. Um, R.I.P. to, uh, to um, St. Q. Jaspor of Jackson, Tennessee, uh, killed November 6, 2014, by a black officer uh, by the name of um, Raymond Barr. Uh, not, not only to mention, um, if, I, if I am, I stand to be corrected, but if we do a um, analysis of the cop killings here in Memphis, Tennessee, I'd like to see the numbers of those black people who were killed by white cops as opposed to black cops. Mm -hmm. Since I do not have that data, I will not assume or, or try to say this, that, or the third. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm, I'm sure that, that there are with that example being in, in my own hometown, I know that that's not the only isolated incident that we have of black cops uh, killing black people in a black community. Okay. Um, so, um, but um, I, I, I would stand, you know, and this is just my opinion, I would stand to believe that, that um, I would want to believe that it's true that black officers in black neighborhoods would be a little bit, would be more sympathetic to their own people, um, and, and we were, you know, that that is what the general consensus is, consensus is. But what we find in sociology is what people think is general knowledge or believe to be true generally. Um, a lot of times, when you look deeper into that, it is is usually not true. Mm -hmm. um, so, mm -hmm. what? Um, in my in my observation, Jeffrey, I I haven't seen. I haven't seen most of the news, Omar, that it is white supremacist killer cops killing black people. Now and then, he said, isolated incident. We see where a African-American cop has killed another African-American. Now, without having done a scientific study or survey, is this, would this be your unscientific perspective, Omar? You know, uh, what I've seen among the associates I have that are police officers, black police officers, somewhere over time they take on the mentality of white police officers okay. trying to fit in so they can say, uh, I'm like you. So therefore, you hate niggas, I hate niggas. Mm -hmm. okay. So you kill niggas, I kill niggas. Okay. And I've seen that over time, as I, and they don't know that they're evolving, but I know that they're evolving okay. into that same racist mentality. Now I believe that if we had had uh, better, better uh, uh, rules for better guys, like for example, that, that police officer that, that approached Sandra Bland, is that her name? Right, that's her name. He had no business pulling her out of the police car at right. all. Mm -hmm. That was against protocol. You got to write the warrant, a, a traffic ticket, and let her roll on. Mm -hmm. But because you got the mind of white supremacy, and you feel like she's disrespecting your wishes, not your order to put the cigarette out. You can't order her to do it because she's in her own car smoking something that's legal and not doing anything that violates the law. But because you feel like you, she violated your wishes, 
then you felt like you needed to go to, to go to the next step and pull your race card out, your white supremacy card out, and do what you need to do. But I believe that if we had black policing, long story short, if we had black police officers policing the black community, then they could bond with the people that they know, the people that they came from, and they could have a better understanding of why we do some of the things we do, and they could de-escalate mm -hmm. some of the issues that we have in the community. White officers don't care. You broke the law, here's the punishment for it, and I'm going to execute it on the spot if you don't come on and get your, I mean, get your handcuffs on you. Okay. If we can get our community to police our own self, we can eliminate that. Right, absolutely. Now, one more time. The number to call today, 901-327-2500. Doc Tatum, Al Hentrum, give us a call. Allen, 901-327-2500. We've got 15 minutes. We've got a long time. We can get quite a few things done. We've got two more on this critique. Believing that a half-white president is going to be significantly Significantly different from a completely white one. Omar. You know, before President Obama was <laughs> elected to the high office of president, he was selected by a hidden committee of people that felt like we can take him and do something with him. And he has done their bidding since the first day he took office. And, and really in black America, nothing's changed. Oh, my hope. Pause right there before we lose this caller. Yeah, go ahead. Put a pin. Please go ahead. We love, we love calls. Come on in, caller. Yeah, I'm going to call back just a step and go. I used to go and visit uh, all the sisters bar quite a lot. Yes. I say. And I would be surprised and all and, and angry about certain things that white people did. And he would always tell me, he said, look, um, um, you're getting all mad and upset about that. It's in your nature. These are his people. That's what Paul says the Bible would tell me that. He gets so upset about that, and it's just in their name. Okay. He would go back to the Holocaust. You know, it's a TV uh, station on now that doesn't do anything how they war. They show the Holocaust at least three or four yeah, that's, times. That's the history channel. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. That's the history channel. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Omar. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. You finished? Well, I just want to throw it in that Hitler, <laughs> the Holocaust is shown at least twice, World War I, World War II, and on TV. Hitler, they, uh, see, those people like Jews on there, well, they're not going to forget. They want their, I mean, they want their children, their great, 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 great grandchildren to know what they did, and they want the whole public to sympathize with their cause. Right. And uh, that's, that's, okay. that's, the way, that's the way it is. You know, I heard. Uh, some, I don't know the joke or some old Jew who have been, no, now they were supposed to be dying somewhere and they visited him at the hospital and pulled his foot. Now, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's true. It could have been a joke. Hey, thanks for calling, Omar. Right. You're talking about teaching our history, our issues, and our values, and we left off with you, Brother Omar Baruti. Continue. You know, there's something else, too. Uh, Dr. King, when he was living, was not loved by white people. Let's get that real clear. In fact, turn your radio up so you can hear that real clear. Dr. King, when he was walking the earth, white people hated him. Mm -hmm. The government hated him. That's why they followed him. That's why Jacob Hoover was trying to just trying to assassinate him early on in the picture. They hated his guts. Mm -hmm. And that they even hated Dr. King after he was dead. Mm -hmm. They had to repackage Dr. King to a man that had a dream. Mm -hmm. Not the one that was asking for economic justice. Mm -hmm. So once they repackaged him, then they could give it to us and say, oh yeah, Dr. King, he was, he was a dreamer. He was a man of peace. But they can't package, they can't give you the real Dr. King. The same thing with Malcolm X. They had to go back and repackage Malcolm X so that people would look up to him and, and have some respect for him. But the Malcolm X that, that was walking the earth back then, they couldn't stand his guts and they did everything they could to assassinate him. We got to stop like repackaging our leaders that are, that are out here for us. And we, in fact, when they kill our leaders, we need to go kill one of their leaders. I believe in the apple. I'm going to tell you that again. I believe in the apple. I don't think God made a mistake on that. Mm -hmm. All right. Lonnie, last one. Key word that he just mentioned, repackaging. That's part of what I've been talking about in the debate going forward. And that is how you have your debate diminished. Then the next thing you know, your whole debate has been repackaged. Number 27, last one. Do we have a call, Isaac? 
Let's see if they say something. Okay. Go ahead, call you on the air. Okay. Thinking that the first black fill in the blank to get into a white institution actually represents progress, even though whites have never considered it progress to get into our institutions. Do I need to read that again? Number 27, Dr. Boyce Watkins, read along with me, says that thinking that the first black, fill in the blank, to get into a white institution actually represents progress even though whites have never considered it, considered it be, typo, a typo, considered it to be progress to get into our institutions. This reminds me of we must take back our country. <laughs> That's what that reminds me of. Right. Lonnie, take off on it. We're closing down. Take a couple of minutes, Lonnie. Expound on it. And then I want to come on around the table. With the, with the uh, topic of uh, being brainwashed uh, over all of this, you know, that's how the uh, majority of us think. You know, we got the first president of the bank, uh, whatever bank, and now our people set free. You know, that's how uh, subconsciously sometimes we do think, um, but not realizing that that's just. If there's just one, that, that means it's a, a, a whole lot of resistance that's preventing more than getting that office or in that position. But, yeah, we, we still lose sight of gold that, yeah, you might be in that position or you might be doing that, but what are you doing for your people? Yeah. And is that position that you're holding, is that benefiting your people or is that, uh, you know, continuing the, the, the problem that's going on today? So. You know, I, me, myself, I'm not too caught up in referencing any title or anything like that. It's based on action, so that's just my opinion. Okay. But I do, I, can I add this one last thing? Uh, I, it's funny yes. to me. Uh, We're coming down, coming down. Just, just briefly, you know, we, we talk about the police and all of this, but the question about, you know, the, the like, last week or so that, that Klan rally that was in South Carolina or any Klan rally that goes on, who do you see protecting them? You see the local police out there protecting these hate groups, right? Mm -hmm. And these are supposed to be the number one hate groups in America, but who are the first to come to the aid? They're there before they even, you know, get together. When the rally is called, they already got their but to me, that's a sign. We should be able to see that and, you know, call that out. Like, how we sit here and just allow our, our tax dollars, you know, protect a group of people who are hating us. You know, that to me, that's that's an oxymoron. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a okay. Talu, mm -hmm. that last word, that last one, the very last one. You know, I, I agree. You know, um, these people are terrorists. But you know what I found? I, I learned that there's no statue to identify them as terrorists. And that's why they don't, that's why the media doesn't use the word terrorist when they're attacking terrorists. Okay. The thing is, but, but, Upon the definition of terrorists, they're terrorists. Mm -hmm. They're terrorist organizations. And they're, they're out to get us. That's just bottom line. They're out to get us, and they're going to get us. Okay. Because number one is we don't have anything in place to prevent them from getting us. We, we just, we're like ducks in a pond. You know, so we, we, we have to develop a mindset. And I think that's what we're trying to do on this show. You know, we're trying to give a narrative to our people and help them develop a, a mentality <coughs> other than the one that we've had in the past. But I'd like to say this one thing about another one of those topics that yes, you about Dr. King and, and Malcolm. My mentor and good friend brother, uh, Isaac Kareem, who's about 83 years old now, the public might know him as a pie man. He was the first brother to come around and make bean pies for his area back in the day, back in the 70s, right? I mean, commercialized, okay? Uh, he was once the security of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Malcolm, Muhammad Ali, um, and Minister Farrakhan. Okay, and he traveled all over the United States. 
And he and I were in business together when I was like 21 years old or something like that. And he used to tell me a lot of things about the FOI and about Malcolm and, and the other brothers too, you know. Uh, but one thing he used to always say that stuck with me, okay, that Malcolm and those, and those ministers back in the day were fearless men. They mm -hmm. didn't fear nobody or nothing, okay. And when Malcolm used to go on the, the campus, okay, and some of those, therefore I would probably have gone into the campus and make sure things are set right for him. But Malcolm would just display a certain mentality that clearly indicated he knew what he wanted, he knew what we wanted as black people, and he was out to get it. Okay? Today, those same brothers are here. The same brothers. They haven't gone anywhere. Don't see, I want our people to understand that that the Muslim FOI, the nation of Islam, and and all of that, all of that was right then and we're right today. Okay. Okay, the, the point, the point is this. Almighty God has never left black Americans alone. Those men and women who will defend us to the death are right here today. And we say war. The war, the war is declaring on us, but it's something that they don't want. Mm -hmm. When I say they, I'm talking about the racists, mm -hmm. the white supremacists, mm -hmm. they don't want it. Right. They think they want it, but they don't want it. Yeah. Some, something has happened, yeah. and we're talking about it on this show every Sunday, right. as part of that whole indoctrination slash media process, right. that whole diminishing the debate, and instilling the fear in the hearts of men, grown, I almost said something that <laughs> grown men. Yeah. And running around full of fear, coward. Yeah. Now here's something right here. In this article, it says, "Family, Louisiana theater. The gunman was mentally ill." We're gonna talk about the guy in Lafayette, Louisiana. Right. So this is you're talking about that. That's right. This is being set up right now, today, to paint this killer, cold-blooded killer, because he feels as a white privilege. I shouldn't lose my job, I shouldn't be walking around and have all these issues, so I'm going to go and kill up a bunch of people. Right. And about that, you, you just don't see that on the other side in terms of y'all know who I'm talking about. So then they proceed to say... No, you don't see it on the other side when it comes to black people. Right. You, you said it right. Sure. <laughs> okay. A man who lost his family, home, and businesses as he spent years angrily espousing right-wing extremism now, on television, the internet, and to anyone who would listen, did not say a word as he opened fire on strangers in dark in a darkened movie. Theater. Authorities said Friday, John Russell Hauser, 59, stood up about 20 minutes into theater, nights, Thursday nights, showing up the train wreck and fire on the audience, killing two people and wounding nine with a semi-automatic handgun. There was a, a horrific, horrific scene in there. The blood on the floor sticks in the seat, showing the trajectory of the bullets. The smell. State Police Colonel Michael Edmondson said after top officials got an inside lock, look at the theater. Do we have a call, Isaac? No, sir. Okay. And so and he took his time, methodically, they say, and carried out this action. What does that say? That sounds like pre premeditated mass murder. Um, or, or attempted premeditated mass murder, but definitely two counts of premeditated murder uh, because he, he he had a venue that he was going to go to. And I don't, uh, anybody who has a gun at a movie theater, come on now. Okay. You know, he had a gun at a movie theater. Was he there to watch the movie or was he there to shoot it up? It's, it's plain and it's clear. Uh, he they, had, they laid it out and they're now setting it but, up. The, the, the Go whole, ahead, I'm sorry. The whole I get excited. Go ahead, Jeff. But listen, we, we, we're about out of time. Right. Can you wrap it up in 30 seconds? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, you see the way that they the, the way that they frame the people who belong to their group, the European group. You see the way that they frame those people as being mentally ill. But, um, yeah, uh, Mike Brown was framed as a, as a thug. Uh, Eric Garner was framed as a thug. 
uh, Sandra Bland, um, it was framed as a loud talking, whatever you want to call it. She, 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 we're, we're being dehumanized as they're being given. Okay, we're gonna have privileges. to wrap. We're gonna have to wrap it up right there. One last note. The Referral Center Incorporated is a fully licensed and it is your connection to real estate brokers, Tennessee, Arkansas, 